What is this? Cat in a hat? Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate this movie. If you can't find it on YouTube, by the way, uh, just go to Channel Awesome. It's there. Um, we're, we're fighting all the... All the ones are getting taken down uh, on YouTube, by the way. We are fighting them. I mean, we, we are... It, it's I know they're always the piece of shit movies, too. Like, yeah. We have we to preserve really... the sanctity of Mamma Mia! Of Cat in the Hat! <laughs> Mike Myers has deep pockets! <laughs> Pe people might actually think it's a bad movie. <laughs> I'm sure we're the only ones to say it. Uh, but anywho, let's... Oh, fuck this movie. Um, God, that's... Oh. Uh, can, can we just make this vlog like nothing but us saying over and over, fuck, fuck this movie? Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> fuck! Fuck this fucking movie and its motherfucking ass! You know... And oh. It's the first film from Bo Welch. This is, I think, his first directing effort. What a horrible film to start on, because what, what a phenomenal talent he had. But Bo Welch is a production designer who's done a lot of the Tim a lot Burton of the Burton films. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Men really, in Black. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, just unbelievable talent. Didn't direct. He did production design for a minute. And I. I have no idea if this was mostly him or the studio. If I had to guess, I'd say it's the studio. The studio um, that's trying so hard to make sure we never run it. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, because... God help us if we tell the truth about Cat in the Hat. Because the, fucking Grinch came out, and I, I still... I, how can any of you like that movie? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, but, oh, people like that movie? Oh, oh! That's... Like no, there. That's what the ending of that. That's really kind of soul crushing. I I no, I it's. Can't. I I mean. I will say this is not the worst of those movies, but I mean this I think is the worst of those movies. I I'd <laughs> say second, honestly. I, I think this is just under Cat in the Hat. I mean, think of because you have the Lorax, which at Lorax least is the best. Was... Yeah, Lorax I think is the best of them. No, no, Horton here's a who is probably. Oh, I haven't seen Horton yet. Uh, so but my even, guess uh, is I would agree with you, and I would say Horton then Lorax. Yeah. Then, then Grinch. Then Cat in the Hat, so it's then just this, under yeah, it. This, yeah. is, this is rock bottom. Um, I mean, it is, but like, the only thing I can figure is that it's kind of like Space Jam, where people just kind of grew up with it and like Jim Carrey, and it is visually, you know, kind of so interesting. I like Jim Carrey shit when I was here. young, but, you know, at some point, you grow up. No, no, I... <laughs> I, I, I mean, maybe Just because I like, like Jim Carrey in some things doesn't mean I have to like him in everything. It doesn't mean I can't look back on films that I saw when I was, like, 10 and be like, yeah. No, my yeah. favorite is the uh, Robot Chicken when it's, like, there's, it's some sort of Christmas rhyme and it's, like, the Grinch that stole Christmas or something like that. And this kid goes up and he goes, oh, no, it's the piece of shit Jim Carrey Grinch, not the real Grinch. And he's like, ho, ho, what are we gonna do here? And it's just like, ah. Oh, so, Grinch. No, because everyone when that movie came out, I mean, critics didn't like it, but everyone was like, wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? Wasn't Jim Carrey amazing? Wasn't that great? And it's like, oh, no. And I'm like, this is going to be everywhere now. And it fucking was. And then they we finally climax with the worst with Cat in the Hat. And people are like, you know, maybe this whole thing we're doing with Dr. Seuss, you know, anal raping his grave, isn't the best. And we should actually try to put effort into this shit. And they I think get, anal raping's not harsh enough. Skull fucking. Yeah, I think yeah. that's better. And you know, so then when Lorax came out, they they tried a little harder, I guess. You know, at least it looked like the book, uh, but still just missed so much. <sighs> Lorax, the story missed, was Lorax to do. missed the point on a lot of things, but in the grand scheme of things, I find it way more mostly harmless. Like to me, it's mostly harmless. Just yeah, you missed the vote on that one but you know what it's it's not cat in the hat <laughs> yeah no i mean for me it's the big thing for me with what they're doing with dr seuss is in the movies anyway is that they're it, it it's one of the few times where i say this feels like an insult and because i you know people work hard on these movies and it's they like come taking, together and they it's have like to taking make this mr rogers together. and turning it into some cheap corporate shill product yeah and like, it's just it's something just that was so, so wrong. To something do. that was so perfect and so wholesome and so brilliantly done and well done and had a perfect message. Just everything about it's just about as perfect a product as that, you that, can that get. That doesn't sell toys. But but no, we no, have no, to sell things. But no, we need Jim Carrey having a fucking guy kiss a dog's butt and having his head and a woman's breast and stuff. That's Doctor Seuss. That's Doctor Seuss with attitude. It's that. Fucking dog from The Simpsons that Homer voiced in Dr. Seuss, and fuck you for it. Just fuck you for it. 
I'm sorry. I get really <laughs> fucking angry at this. I hate it because I've gone on and on about this in the reviews about how they just see it as, oh, well, it's just kid stuff. We get this because we're adults. And no, you don't. And you don't see what was so brilliant about this writing and about these stories and why they're timeless and yours are going to die and they're going to be shit and more people are waking up and realizing that they're shit and they should be dead and that this great work is going to stand it's going to live forever because he fucking tried and he respected kids and he respected adults. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's gonna be in the comments. <laughs> like, no, okay. oh, I don't care. Uh, no, I'll bring say it, this. Bring it up. This yeah, one. I don't. It, I, you know, I will say this. I don't think I hate the Grinch as much as you do. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't think it inspires that much hate. The Cat in the Hat does, though. This movie was so insufferable to get through. First off, Mike Myers in probably one of the most greatest, most spectacular failed performances, mm -hmm. like, ever put on the screen. Like, if people think Johnny Depp is bad in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like, it, th this... No, people be... like him in that, too. I, not it's everybody. It's fucking weird. Not yeah. everybody. Some people thought his Michael Jackson Willy Wonka was yeah. bizarre. But, I, don't, I don't get it, but... Um, this, yeah, what, one of the great failed performances of all time, but not even entertaining to watch fail, because you want a great failed performance... Dennis Hopper as King Koopa. That's a Super Mario Brothers. Failed One of the greatest failed performances. Uh, Christopher Lambert as Raiden. He's so great to watch. Beautifully combat. Uh, you know, we've... We've had so many great... Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze, <laughs> just one of the great failed performances. Tommy Lee Jones is Two-Face. Yeah, you just... You Wonderful love failure. Yeah, just so entertaining to watch. So miscast, so awful, but so fun to watch. It's just fun how much they failed. You're just like, you know what? That's hilarious. This, I, 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 what scene was it where I snapped? Okay, no, there is a scene. It's the scene where the NC snaps too, where uh, Mike Myers where gets is kicked in the, the nuts, and okay. it cuts to him on a swing in a checkered dress playing this song, and that just cuts back. And what did you do, reenact it? We're watching this. That scene. Funny. Okay, so keep in mind throughout this entire movie, I am sitting there like this. I am like. God, make it stop! And that scene happens, and he gets kicked in the balls, and I'm, like, I would have been... Yeah, we were like, way over couch, here. Yeah. Like, we are on the couch. I mean, I just watch out. I even, just even just farther. Like yeah. I was, like, way over here, and that scene happened, and this literally happened. Why are we watching this?! And... Then we just sort of sat there in silence <laughs> for a little bit. I'm not making this up. That really like, happened. I, I literally fucking snapped. That is how much I hate this movie. It's... It was... I, it was so hard to find... You hit the look on your face. Was. You were just like... Well, that's a first. <laughs> I think you were just like, why don't we pause it? Yeah, like, we, we just needed a break. It was just so relentless and how terrible it was. And... You know, what's so funny is that oh. the, the Grinch is so bad, uh, and I, I, it's hard to say which one is the bigger insult, because I can have, it's worse. It's a worse movie. Uh, the Grinch, I, I think, is a much stronger story, uh, and, and there's so much more to break the down. Grinch Cat, Cat the Grinch was less of a, the, the thing that offends me most about Cat in the Hat. As bad as the Grinch gets, and sniffing the dog's butt, and all that, like, and Jim Carrey prancing, and... As bad as it is, and even though obviously it was advertised, there were toys and stuff and, and movie tie-ins, I still felt, in, in the world of the movie itself, it wasn't as much of a corporate shill. Yeah. Like, it was bad, but it was its own thing, and it's like, we're still going to have a moral, even though it's completely derailed by all the advertising around this film. Can in the Hat, though, I think it was the Universal ad they threw yeah. in there that insulted me the most. I'm like, okay... You know, you could argue that it's just a failed idea, a failed interpretation of Dr. Seuss, but one thing I never, never would have associated with Dr. Seuss is just, like, an ad for Universal, like, theme parks. Like, By the way, there's a Dr. It, Seuss land at Universal theme park, and it, it looks gorgeous, by the way. I'm much sure I'd just go there and then watch this movie. But to but... just put that in your movie, I'm like, okay, so that's why this movie exists. I mean, that was it. That like, was the reason this movie existed, right there. 
Like, it's just a cheap ad. Well, and everything like, about and, it oh, feels like, God. well, The Grinch was a hit, so try and do kind of what they do with The Grinch, just make it a hint different. Because Mike Myers is clearly doing, like, what Jim Carrey was trying to do, sort of a funny voice that's a little different from what we've seen, like, in the cartoon and other interpretations, uh, with some adult joke, or they're said to be adult, they're probably the most childish things in them, but they're pop culture jokes. I don't, I don't hate... Mike Myers, he's done a lot no, of things. No, no, and I'm he's done a lot Mike of things too. I found very funny in the past. But to think that you could do Jim Carrey, n not gonna happen. Like well, Mike, Mike Jim Myers Carrey can different. only do Jim Carrey, and even then, Jim Carrey's annoying when he's doing Jim Carrey. So yeah. to think that you could imitate Jim Carrey, no. Like, yeah, it just so bombs. Well, I think there's something to I'm not saying at all that Mike Myers probably didn't try his hardest to, to work in this suit and stuff like that. But Jim, like I said, Jim Carrey just like, when, when you hear him on interviews, and like I said, I don't like the performance in Grinch, but when you hear him on interviews, how he worked with this makeup and this suit, and he had to do like meditation, he had to do this zen type mental, you know, breaking down where he said, I think he said, you could hit me with a baseball bat and I'd be like, hi, how are you? And, so, and you, you appreciate and you see it in the performance at least because he just owns that suit he owns that makeup and i never once thought to myself oh well yeah that looks uncomfortable that looks tricky to do because he just so owns it. and it must have been a nightmare it must have been probably the toughest thing First i'm sure my, he's done my, as doesn't have the face i mean jim carrey has the the ability to contort his face in such a way that and he his can body. Act through, yeah and his body but even in the face like the ability to contort his face in such a way that you can bring it out through the suit, and Mike Myers does not. He just does not have that talent or the the muscles necessary in your face to do or, it. Or, or really even his body. And again, I'm not... If and I was... to put him in a suit like that, it's like, it's not just a Mike Myers fail. Like, it's a fail on everybody involved. Nobody looked at that suit for 10 seconds and thought, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the... Because I could look at the Jim Carrey Grinch as much as I don't like that movie either. But I'm like... The makeup's okay, amazing. He's, I'm like, he's the Grinch. Yeah. Like, I get it. I look at Mike Myers as the cat in the hat and I'm like, what the fuck is that? I want to keep this thing what? away from my children. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I don't want this thing, and I will let Johnny Depp as Michael Jackson, Willy Wonka next to my children. As <laughs> I will. This thing. And the, the suit constantly looks like it's... It is what it is. It's a restrictive painful thing to be in and even when he's smiling going, <laughs> or doing whatever voice he made you know, i'll say this so it's not as it hideous awful. as thing one and thing two. Oh god that yeah, that, that, was... that freaking haunted my nightmares uh, i did not i did not get one wink of sleep that night I, I'll not, not even for a minute i just every time i closed my eyes i would see thing one and thing two and i would just go ah! you know as much as we don't like the grinch we'll sort of acknowledge like there's some things in there that like either see what they were trying to do you know kind of in a good way or one or two things kind of worked, but not really that many. There it, is an it's attempt. Like, everything yeah, everything that didn't work in The Grinch is in yeah. Cat in the Hat. The Grinch, more least, things is, as much as The Grinch bombs on a number of things, at least it's an attempt to make a movie. I'll never take that away from anyone who wants to argue that. That I'm like, okay, they threw some effort into this. They're trying to tell a story and a narrative. It doesn't always work, but it's there. There, there's just nothing... I mean, The Cat in the Hat... It, it's not even one of my favorite Seuss stories to begin it's with. It's not mine either, honestly. It's well at the bottom. I realize he's basically the Seuss mascot. Uh, but that's like us not caring that much about Mickey Mouse. It's like, we get he's the mascot, but he's the least interesting <laughs> out of most of the Disney characters. Yeah, who makes a fucking live-action Mickey Mouse movie with, like, a, a guy in a Mickey Mouse suit? <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea written all over it. Um, Time for another good idea. Bad idea. <laughs> and, yeah, I think it's one of those things where they obviously tried to recreate what they thought worked in The Grinch, and I'm so happy that, I mean... I have yet to meet a person who liked this movie. I'm sure there's somebody out there, but I have yet to meet them. And not only do people not like it, they say it's one of the few that was like, awful. Yeah, I mean, like, they hate it with a passion almost as much as we it's, do. It's one of the few films where if somebody is out there who did like it, I don't want to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's going to end well. But it's, like, it's, This is one of the few, and normally, almost always, I'm just like, oh, you know, you see something good in anything. You know, people who like The Grinch, I'm like, all right, I joked earlier, it's soul crushing, but I'm like, I'm sure I could find a way to get along with somebody like The Grinch. I, Ken the Head, I'm not so sure. No, it, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure I could do it. Not, and, not, and, not and preserve my soul. What it, little it, it of it is left. You know, it, it gave me hope, honestly. Maybe 
I don't know, it just gave me hope that people hated this film as much as they did, and people, and, and what I love is people trying to rationalize why, you know, well, the Grinch had this, and the cat had, like, they couldn't tell why they liked one and why they didn't like the other, and, I mean, in some respect, I couldn't quite tell either, but it is kind of what we said, where it's like the Grinch at least was attempting to make a movie, and even to Ron Howard's credit, he says something that I bizarrely kind of respected, because he's a huge Chuck Jones fan, and he loves the Grinch, and what he said about the movie is that he said, you know, the Chuck Jones one is so classic and so good and so perfect that we didn't even attempt to try and retell it. Which, in some respect, is like, then why are you directing this at all? Yeah, I mean, but, it's a valid point, but at but, least... But at minute. the very least, there's kind of an understanding where with this one, there's just... You could totally see, like you said, it was just corporate, make money, Grinch was a hit, try one with Mike It is Myers. one of the most shameless, cynical, corporate pieces of shit probably ever put to screen. Like, it just, I I don't even know how you make something this cynical, where it's just like, yeah, let's make a quick buck, like, off of Dr. Seuss. It just, I, how do you sleep at night <laughs> having done that? I did, it's, it's like, you should be put on trial. It should be like war crimes. <clears throat> Go to the Hague. And like, what, and here's what, here's what I found out. There's some people, or there's some artists who work well with a blank sheet of paper. And I'm not talking and I'm not talking about Bo Welch here. I'm talking about the <laughs> yeah. the studio corporate minds behind this. There, there's some artists that work well with just a blank sheet of paper and say draw whatever you want. There's other artists who need some direction. Draw a pony. It can look however you want, just draw a pony or something. And with this, it, it with Cat in the Hat, I kind of feel that way, because Grinch had a very specific story, and even if you don't tell it well, it, it's there. And with Cat in the Hat, there's kind of, it's the most minimal a story. So on the one hand, there's very little to go with, and there's very little direction to start off. And it's like, well, what do you do with the Cat in the Hat? It's just there, there's so little. But on the other hand, you could look at it as that blank sheet of paper, do whatever you want, the sky's the limit. And I feel like they sort of went the route of, yeah, well, we'll give you some direct, we'll give you, like, sir, incorporate this and get that and get this celebrity and get this tie-in and put this person in there and stuff. And I think you clearly needed someone who would look at that sheet of paper and just be, do whatever I want? Oh, my God, I am so happy, thank you, God, to do this with Cat in the Hat. Because I know Cat in the Hat, you know, they say there's, like, no story or anything, but it's like, you could make a good movie out of that just out of the possibilities of what the Cat in the Hat could do with the worlds he could create and the characters and thing one, thing two, and what you could do with them. You could But you spent so long trying to figure out if you could that you should <clears throat> stop and think if you should. No, if you really want to try and do a good Cat in the Hat movie, I think it's possible. It'd be very difficult, but it is possible. You would have to have someone that, like, just has this endless amount of imagination. Like, you know, you need, like, a Miyazaki or something like that. Just or like, Miller. I Honestly, yeah, or Babe, Miller. Babe 2, Back <clears throat> in the City, and we, just got, out, movie, we just got yeah. out of Mad Max, which, like, you know... It, it doesn't, it's less scary than Cat in the Hat. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like, you know, it's not a particularly wordy story. Mm. So, it, like, he's proven he can do stuff like that, where, you know, you take a little and you make a lot out of it. I yeah. just... Ugh. Yeah, no, it, it's one of those things where it's but, like, you, you this, this could happen. I'm not against the idea of it happening, but it would have to take a lot of care and a lot of thought and somebody who would really want to do it and it's clear, and most of the people working on it, I mean, I'm sure Bo Welch was happy to be working on a film, finally. You know, direct yeah. a film. Uh, I just, but, it's just not <clears throat> fair to Bo Welch. To yeah. Me. I mean, for... It's well, no, cause, so... Cause he, he's, directed, he's directed, like, episodes of The Tick and stuff like that, so he has and, done other and, stuff. And, uh, I think, Pushing Up Daisies, he did some Yeah, like, ones. he's done some of those and stuff, so I mean, he's fine. I mean, he definitely likes the really quirky, awkward, it's a big shock from a guy like that. Well, I will say this, the production <clears throat> design was about the only thing that was halfway decent about the movie. But even that, I mean, was like... Kind of excess. Such a... Yeah, it's such a nightmare, too. <laughs> it's it's kind of like this color... Everything looked like prison bars to me. Like, the walls and the color and everything. It uh, really shows you why so some things work better in animation than they do live action. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, even watching... Uh, for, when I was doing the review, I went and I watched the old Cat in the Hat cartoon, the, the Frizz Freeling one. Because uh, I forgot, actually, several Warner Bros. directors did, did Dr. Seuss. And Frizz Freeling, I think, actually did more than Chuck Jones, I think. Don't quote me on that. But uh, but he did The Cat in the Hat, and he got the... Um, 
I swear, the Schmucker's brand jelly guy, I think he was the guy doing the can the head. What I liked about it, they had to add more than what was in the book. I mean, that they all do. Uh, but they gave him kind of this edge to him. There really was kind of this mysticism. Like, every time the fish would talk, you could just tell he clearly wasn't listening. And he's like, you know, we're getting... Just a, he was kind of the troublemaker, and I think that's why people relate to the book it's, you know what, this so is much. Almost... It's the first book kind of saying, you know what, Dr. Seuss is saying, a little bit of trouble is okay. And how often do you see a kid book saying that? Yeah. It's not often. And then this... This one is just like, the Anarchy, piece... the fucking Joker's on the loose, he's gonna kill you! Yeah! <laughs> like, he is so fucking psychotic that, it, you know what it plays like? It's almost like one two-hour-long robot chicken joke. Like, it's a spoof of Cat in the Hat where it's like, oh, the Cat in the Hat's really psychotic. That's the joke. Yeah. Like, right, right down to where he says, I'm not good at rhyming. It's like, oh! Uh, okay. I, I let out my anger earlier. <laughs> I haven't a tear left to shed. Um, but yeah, no, this, this one may be in my top five. Yeah, somewhere uh, like below maybe Mamma Mia <coughs> and uh, uh, Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, no, th this like this is this is in my top five of the it, most insufferable movie experiences. Yeah, I, I mean, out of all of them, every so far yeah. every Dr. Seuss movie has said some some element of insult to what Dr. Seuss was doing, and in a new creative way. <laughs> uh, but some are obviously trying harder than Horton some, Hears a Who is not a but good some movie. Some have that shred. Yeah. of dignity in it to say, you know what, we are going to try to say something and mean something. Even if it ain't much, we're going to try. This is the one that is zero. Yeah, Th zero. this is by far the biggest insult. Horton Hears the Who is probably the closest. It doesn't work. It's not a good movie, but I don't think it's bad enough to do a review because people have been asking me. I'm like, it's it's not bad enough to get like a lot of funny um, material on it, but Laura, it, it's the closest to following the spirit Laura of the had a lot of problems, but it was pretty, and I'm like, all right, beneath all of your mistakes, there's... Still a moral there, I guess. And then you, you know what it is, Lorax. I could almost see how this movie would work. I could yeah. almost see how they would pull it off, and, and then they fuck it Grinch, up. But Grinch is a saw. failed Ron Howard experiment. And again, I'm like, well, I mean, the moral is in there somewhere. Like, but but this, there's there's just nothing. It is the it biggest. Is... We are not going to try to do a fucking thing that Dr. Seuss. It's intended. a shakedown. <laughs> it's literally the movie was a shakedown. They got a bunch of that you basically all the studio it was a studio shakedown where they let a bunch of kids into the theater, pulled out guns, grabbed the kids, shook all the money out of their pockets, tossed them on and said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this movie is. That's all this movie is. What a, what a wonderful visual for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. And, like, this is somebody who had to sit through, like, Super Mario Brothers as a kid. And, like, I've sat through a lot of... But this one is the biggest insult I think I've ever had to sit through. Yeah. Uh, of just, not only are we not going to follow the source material, but we are going to rub our asses in how much we're not going to follow it. Yeah. Um, at, at least... <laughs> At least the Super Mario Brothers movie didn't have, you know, like an advertisement for Nintendo Power in the middle of the <laughs> Surprisingly! Movie. Surprisingly, Surprisingly it didn't. I'm like, wow, at least they had the dignity. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that was? The Wizard? <laughs> I think The Wizard was less of a corporate show movie, and that movie is a giant advertisement for Super Mario Brothers 3. At least it tried to be a movie yeah. at some point. Like, I... The, the, you know what? No, because... Uh, all I went in, to, when I saw The Wizard, all I went in to see was a preview of Super Mario Bros. 3. And that's what I got. You got it. So really, by the low, got some healthy hits. By the low <laughs> standards I set for myself as like a 10 or 11 year old at the time, I got what I needed. I cannot imagine being 10 years old and walking in to see Cat in the Hat and enjoying it. I imagine throwing up. It's one of the few <laughs> movies where when I leave, I feel dirty. I feel unclean. I feel despicable. I, I just feel ugly, and the world looks a little ugly after the seeing The Care Bears it. were created as greeting card. Like, it's basically a giant commercial for greeting cards, and that movie had more dignity, and I enjoyed yeah. that movie as a kid. I can't... I try to think of all the dumb things I enjoyed as a kid. The stupidest things. I'm like, would I have liked this movie? And I, I like a kid, No, yeah. I don't think I would have. I think I would have either been bored... I it's think I would have been terrified... I mean, yeah, it, it's. Scary I don't think for I ever reasons. would have watched it again. I would more likely seen the Grinch and enjoyed that as a small child. Like, yeah, but Cat in the Hat, no, no. It's it, yeah, like I said, even as a little kid, I could probably see myself 
uh, liking the Grinch. Um, yeah, the Jim Carrey Grinch. I could see myself liking it. I could even see an age where I would probably like that more than the animated one. Like, whatever, 12, 13. I want my boob jokes. I want my Jim Carrey. I want my pop cultural reference. I can see that. Uh, and, and yeah, and I cannot see anyone... Uh, being satisfied with Cat in the Hat. If anything, I would feel like instead of being given something, you have had a lot taken away from you. Uh, and, and the taken world... away from you, and yet so much filler thrown in yeah. to keep the movie at like a two-hour running time. Yeah, so it's... Uh... It's the other thing. It felt like the long one of the longest yeah. movies I ever had to sit through. I don't like thinking about it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just, more just, I think about just it thinking more. about it brings me back to that moment when I strangled you, and I'm just like, oh god, this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah it I, just makes me feel mis. It's like you know what? It's like reliving a traumatic experience. I'm having like, like post traumatic stress disorder flashbacks. Yeah. No, it's one of those when I was talking about like which you know the Grinch or Cat in the Hat is sort of the bigger. Oh. You know, like, which one makes me a little angry? It's like, The Grinch I'll talk about more because I think it comes from a story I love so much and was done so well. Can, Can the Head is, is a, is a, really is honestly a brilliant book, but it's not one of my personal favorites. And even the cartoon is done very well, but it's, you know, I don't hold it to this hierarchy. So when I, when I see it, it's like, it's clearly the worst film. I get a little bit more angry about Grinch because, like I said, because I do hold that to such a high standard, but Cat in the Hat, by far, is not only the worst film, but it is, like, just the most painful to get oh. through and most painful to sit through. Uh, and, yeah, it, that is kind of rare that I think of a movie and it's like, when I really think about it, it's like, yeah, just, just a bad feeling. Just a bad, ugly feeling. So, um... It's actually filled with negative energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's... So that's about it. I think we're almost uh, running out of film here too. So uh, um, yeah, guy. Well, what else can we say about just um, 